morning, everyone. How are you all? Good, thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> My great, great pleasure to welcome back Dr. Doug Kennedy, the University of Florida, the uh, uh, uh. I guess for AGU, uh, one, one of the primary motivations. Never thought I'd see Doug Young going to geoscience conference, so maybe someday I'll have to share that same faith. Um, Doug Young did his undergraduate work in Korea. Uh, Fox Tech University, I believe, in physics. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, then he did his PhD. He went to Sweden to work with Raji uh, Abuja mm -hmm. uh, and did computational physics, did a lot of structure searching, DFT calculations before accepting a Carnegie Fellowship um, you, several, several you, years ago. Now. You, you missed the Cambridge. Oh, he, and he was at Cambridge. Too. Yeah, he had a yeah. joint appointment with Cambridge uh, and worked with Chris Picard. So yeah. he's uh, had some great experience. Mm. Uh, computational science has done some really interesting work. and. Um, I'm excited to see the transition now into this more geoscience-related field. Um, so please tell us, tell us what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I left this GR like three years ago because I left 2015 December, and now I just came back my first time to like as a visitor. So. I was quite actually touched uh, in this morning, so I was walking around the, or the corridor, and everything seems sem almost similar, but also quite well <coughs> developed. Okay, so uh, my today talk is uh, something kind of I, I think about something like a funny uh, title, like a VIP recipe, uh, but it's a, it's not VIP, it's not it's not person. So volatiles of interior planet in computational study. So uh, this is what I'm doing also. Dave is a very interesting in this research direction. Uh, just briefly, because I, as a member of HB Star, I need to introduce what we are doing in HB Star. So basically, we're trying to cover all the possible high pressure things. So, so physics, chemistry, material science, and uh, all these things. So put just the high pressure in front of this world, then we are doing this. So, but. Uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, what I'm doing. So uh, why I decided to join HP Star uh, is uh, because I can uh, fully devote my own time for my own research interest. So this is also we I got uh, enough uh, like a research resource uh, as much as I want to do. So especially the very uh, rich uh, computation or, or resource is very important for me, and uh, I'm very happy about this. Okay, this is kind of a very brief summary of what I'm doing, what I, I have been done. Uh, so New Silicon with a team, of course, and some artificial low dimensional uh, compounds. And this is I'm collaborating for like uh, this iron nitrogenide small quantity with the Korean team. And this is experimental theory collaboration. Uh, you know this story, maybe you heard about many times from Dave. Uh, also, organic spontivity and hydride, uh, still right, working with the Victor, and the uh, topological concentrator material under pressure, and uh, some like a new spoke side. So, basically, I'm, I'm covering two broad uh, research subjects. And so, when it comes to the FPO2 story, so this cartoon style can be very easily uh, understood by people. Uh, one day, Dave came to my office and uh, he says, so he's interested in like a new iron oxide compound in a high pressure condition, but especially iron rich oxide, of course, because uh, he was interested in like a near like a core or lower mantle boundary, which generates high pressure or so very rich iron uh, environment. And so I said that time, I can try, but I mean, this, this is my, my consideration, like small problems, like computational science, like uh, uh, these days, binary crystal searching is, can be done by any like computational groups, so very casually. And, but the time was a tough thing, but yeah, yes. Also standard DFT calculation, another level. So I'll just briefly mention uh, during my talk why DFT has a problem for this. Also, pressure reduce like uh, correlation effect mostly in, in general, not always, but in general. So maybe high pressure can be easy. We can disregard this correlation problem of DFT. And yeah, and yeah so this is searching is not going to be by, done by myself. It's done by computer. So I just submit the job and let's see uh, what we got. 
So I start at the highest pressure I can imagine. Of course, this is already core uh, uh, pressure limit. And this is some rough uh, data, what I get. Maybe I don't have to explain what this convex rule means anymore because uh, people talk about this convex rule thing a lot. Oh, really? OK. So this is a kind of horizontal line. We can uh, put this end member, like uh, here is a solid oxygen and the high pressure iron phase. So this is, a, uh, so each data points correspond to the, the different iron oxide stoichiometry with the increasing high uh, iron concentration. And we can create, like a, we generate lots of structure and we're trying to exhaust all the possible uh, space group and all, all the possible uh, combination of uh, iron, iron uh, oxide at a given uh, stoichiometry and determine which structure gives the lowest enthalpy because we just ignore, for now, we ignore entropy term because most, in many cases, solid doesn't care about this entropy. So, uh, not always. <laughs> so, uh, then uh, we calculate this. Uh, 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 this uh, enthalpy difference of this compound with respect to decomposition of individual oxygen and uh, iron. So this is the data. So basically this means along this line we can see which compounds has uh, the minimum uh, energy. And as you can see here, FeO2 comes, comes in. And that time it was uh, very surprising. And I thought, okay, at that time I thought uh, this is a very like, fictitious data. So maybe it's a problem with the FT. So, but anyhow, I report this. And that time, I communicated with Dave, and uh, Dave said, it's surprising. So, but he, he expected like iron-rich phase, but I, I showed like oxygen-rich phase for him. And he tried, he asked, so what's the minimum stability pressure? So of course, I need to go to lower, lower pressure. Then still at 100 gigapascal, this FeO2 still exists here. and. Uh, Normally, like uh, this uh, harmonic phonon, people casually calculate. And uh, at 300 gigapascal and 100 gigapascal, this phonon is uh, stable all the time, even at ambient pressure. So then, it's something strange from my point of view, because if this phonon is stable, then we need to see FeO2 somewhere here. But no one has been observed this FeO2 at ambient. So then I suspect maybe something wrong with the uh, uh, DFT. But anyhow, so I can summarize in this way, as by uh, standard DFT, it works. Then FeO2 is a stable phase at high pressure. And FeO2 might be a metastable form even at ambient pressure. Yes, yeah, this is a publishable, but it's not seems realistic at all. And that time, uh, my, my, my previous uh, supervisor in Cambridge, uh, Chris Picard and Richard, I mean, Richardis, they published uh, this data, and they also show this existence of, of FeO2. Uh, but the good thing to be uh, work with the uh, experimentalists is that we have experimental data, right? So uh, in our paper, this is our first paper, and we uh, synthesized FeO2 out of this chemical reaction and the, these two chemical paths. And so then Maybe you heard from Dave a lot, so I don't have to repeat this scenario because I'm not your scientist. But uh, he believed that this 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 uh, uh, major geoscience event can be explained by existence of FeO2. But this is not my expertise, so I wholly skip this uh, geoscience part. And one year later, we published another paper. The uh, this existence of FeO2 or FeO2H uh, can explain this ultra low velocity zone. Uh, uh, so it's combined with the uh, Wendy Mao's experiments. Uh, so it can be more substantial. And so since then, I, I start uh, about if I can generalize this idea to the, all the possible uh, geoscience problems. So the thing is, uh, uh, but it's okay, so I will, I, will, I will explain it later, but the elementor and the binary searching is a casual we can do. Also, ternary, these days we can do in, in some way, but quaternary or even higher, so good, I, mean, uh, I mean, different, like very complicated uh, compounds, uh, 
the first, the computational resource is very limited. Also, we need to consider about the configuration entropy as well, which we cannot uh, consider easily. And the one more problem is uh, how we can visualize that uh, phase diagram. So there is challenges. So I draw, just draw a line that uh, I can just complete this tunnel phase diagram. So uh, th that's why I say this is a, a volatile interior planet uh, recipe, uh, there's a chef here, so in computational studies. So I just sort of tried to make the similar name like a, you know, one famous uh, textbook in computational science. Okay, so this uh, tunnel phase I can, can consist of uh, one when the member is hydrogen and the other one, another one is uh, iron, which I studied, which is red colored one, and aluminum and magnesium. And here can be oxygen and chlorine and sulfur. So it can be all the possible combination of this uh, uh, different tunnel uh, thing. And to do so, uh, we need to improve this stress searching uh, idea. And the third, uh, DFT description is not so reliable. So we need to go beyond this. And third one is uh, only uh, theoretical data, nobody gonna believe this. So we need to very uh, close collaboration with experimental groups to make that sample and showing this physical property correctly. So my talk, the following talk is the concept of showing this, this, and the, the third one is uh, Maybe you can see in between. Okay, so this improving searching for tunnel compounds. So this is the one tunnel compound I completed for deep low mental uh, pressure, not temperature. So temperature is not involved, so just zero temperature. I, I should acknowledge this. And I will, I will explain uh, this tunnel phase diagram. By the way, this is very expensive uh, data. Okay, uh, who is not familiar with the searching? The basic concept is very simple. I mean, we need to have a, like a searching method which can generate a random unicell and throw the required number of each atom type and uh, relax the structure in like a quantum mechanical forces and stress and uh, look at the lowest energy or other interesting structures, right? Which uh, was been done, I mean, uh, for empirical potential before, but these days we combine with the first principle calculation, mostly DFT, and so we are searching and we're trying to find out that what's the minimum uh, structure in energy landscape, which is a very a, a, a easy concept. Uh, my old paper, also we did uh, this also for example like a strontium, and because I want to show the um, date, uh, example for elements. For strontium at high pressure, we've, I predicted some structures on the pressure and uh, I calculated TC. And this data point is a source match, I mean, very well, very well, excellently well with the experiment data. So also superconductivity TC is following this well. So for single element, this computational structure predictions work very, very nicely. Also superconductivity prediction matches quantitatively with the experiment data. So I have some remarks about this because uh, these days uh, we are working with uh, some binary compounds which has uh, several uh, phonon bands. Uh, the, actually, the Elias publication doesn't necessarily match well with the, this uh, uh, this uh, binary or multiband uh, phonon uh, dispersions, but uh, we are using because uh, we have no alternative ideas. But also, it matches uh, at some point. And then uh, I have one example for binary compounds uh, published in 2011 is about uh, formation of a platinum hydride. And that time, uh, it's just a, a, a theoretical works. Uh, uh, that time, actually, the motivation was uh, the selenium paper of elements. So because uh, he used electro as a, with the platinum, so maybe selenium reacted with the platinum and the forms of platinum hydride and high pressure. So that was motivation. and the, I predicted like uh, this uh, structural transformation with uh, of uh, this uh, tetral structure to FCC or HCP structure and the spoken TC estimated in this way. And as a Matsuka group, they uh, he's from the Shimizu group, and he been working on this field 
since this year, because he came to me and uh, he read my paper and he was uh, quite interested in this. And uh, uh, last, a couple of months ago, I met him in the Singapore and he showed this, so superconductivity of a platinum hydride. So eventually, it took a very long time, but eventually they report the, the formation of a platinum hydride of a uh, hexagonal structure and the superconductivity measurement of a 6.7 Kelvin. So it doesn't match like a quantitative manner, but they shows uh, uh, we are in the, the right track, right uh, direction in our predicting uh, structures. So now you can see uh, Tim's face uh, here. So this is also uh, uh, that time when I was geophysical lab. So we did, uh, uh, so that time we can do this various uh, composition thing for this, uh, for example, uh, magnesium carbide. And, and for example, at ambient pressure, uh, there is no stable compound, although these uh, three metal stable compound can be synthesized experimentally. Um, but under uh, pressure, like a 15 gigapascal, we can see the Mg2C can be stabilized uh, here. So, and electron density and the electron collision function also for this ambient pressure, saying that this is a C4 minus anion uh, antifluorite, uh, fluorite structure. And when we release the pressure, this is stable phonon tells that it might be stabilized at a metastable way. And in our paper, uh, exactly uh, experimental note saying this, uh, stabilized above 15 gigapascal is fully recoverable to ambient condition and contains very unusual simple minus methane and anion. So means uh, this is a kind of one of the excellent match I have ever seen uh, for this uh, theory and experiment collaborations. And also, this structure was predicted by Marvin Cohen in 1993. So we confirm also he is a hypothetical structure. And later, uh, when I moved to HP Star in China, I started collaboration with many uh, Korean uh, research team. And one of the research uh, searching uh, we used for, for predicting uh, 2D uh, silicon structures. So this is quite an interesting idea. Actually, this uh, general searching doesn't apply to this, to find this atomically flat uh, sandwiched uh, to the structure of a silicon. Uh, but uh, this is very interesting structure. It's published uh, this year. And this is two surface layer. It's covered with, the inside the structure is basically diamond structure of silicon. And this, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, this uh, top surface and the bottom surface is atomically flat one. So we can see the number of inner layer increase here, then we can see that some kind of trend of the, the band gap and some uh, structural stability test for like a uh, beyond uh, harmonic phonon. So we tested for unharmonic effect, but still this structure is, can be stabilized back to uh, uh, this atomically flat structure. So we use uh, stress searching thing uh, for this uh, uh, low dimensional silicon structures. So when it comes to the uh, FEOH uh, tunnel phase diagram at high pressure experimentally, this is just a summary of what people have been done. Uh, FEO2, um, hematite, and FEO, and this is some PRL paper by uh, Pepin's group in Edinburgh, uh, this paper, and this is F I mean, ice phase is known, right? And FeO2H is very recently been known. <coughs> and some uh, papers talking about some hydrogen defect uh, structure can be exist in between this tunnel phase diagram, right? So this is a summary of experiment data over this uh, tunnel phase diagram at high pressure condition. And computationally, uh, we searched uh, around the 500 uh, possible compositions of this tunnel phase diagram without uh, experimental data. And the uh, relaxed, relaxation was done for more than uh, 50,000 local minima. And the, so this is a visualization of this, my, my tunnel phase diagram. So in this plot, you can see this uh, circle one here and here, here and here. So all this circle one is a stable phases. 
And the, this uh, squared one is the, the size of square means how much is, is close to this uh, convex line. So it means this big square is very close to this, to this convex line, and that this small one means very far away from this convex line. So maybe this small uh, stoichiometry. So this, to get this one single data, we need to do like around 100 uh, structure searching for this given stoichiometry. And uh, we moved to other stoichiometry, moved to other stoichiometry. So we completed this, all these possible compositions. And this is uh, the color showing this energy depth of this uh, each uh, compound. So at this pressure, we can see this, but this is too complicated to understand, right? So simply, if I uh, show only stable compounds, then it turns into uh, this simple phase diagram, which is very close to the uh, experimental observation for high pressure compound for this uh, FeOH. And uh, so also this partial, uh, so I said, actually, I, I forgot to say, it. so why I call this as recipe, because uh, when I show uh, this data, I was very proud of my data. So I went to, uh, you remember Sung Lee, uh, he was a former uh, Carnegie Fellow, but now he is a professor in Seoul National University in Geoscience. And I showed this data, so I said, or oh, maybe we can explain some like a deep meaning of geoscience based on this tunnel phase diagram. Then said, okay, no, this is a very piece of work, and uh, it's not can cover this all this geoscience pro problem. This is only a recipe. So oh, then I can make a recipe. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the idea. So how to name uh, this uh, uh, project? And this partial, uh, this recipe also along this line, uh, this, so this is our 2016 paper, I mean, in nature, about along this line. So this is uh, one line of this tunnel phase diagram. And along this line also, uh, experimentally, uh, people found FEH5, but uh, uh, computationally, we predicted FEH6. But actually, this motif, they are very similar to each other. So, Maybe there are some more uh, problems for this uh, structure searching, uh, but uh, it's quite reliable, I would say. So this, along this line, we can get the information. And more importantly, uh, what I want to show here, we can draw any like, uh, section of this uh, convex line, for example. So this one, or, so we can zoom in uh, this uh, convex data points, and uh, we can draw the convex line along this way. So then, we can see, actually, there's another one just next to FU to H. It's also stabilized, even stabilized a little bit further than uh, these two, where lone pilot structure FU2 and FU to H, which is a partially occupied hydrogen structure at this pressure. So uh, this structure also has a stable, ah, uh, yeah, stable phonon here. So it means uh, partially release hydrogen stabilized further than these two well-known compositions. So actually, this is a big debate with the uh, Nishi uh, group, Nature paper in 2017 in Nature. They said at lower temperature, FUOTH H is very stable, so it doesn't want to release hydrogen. But even at zero temperature, we can say so the partial release of hydrogen is more preferred than uh, this stoichiometric FUO2H and FUO2. Uh, separately, uh, I'm part of this paper, but uh, they also claim that, so from our side, we believe this partially released, uh, the hydrogen uh, stoichiometry, I mean, non-stoichiometry, this uh, FU2H, X, is uh, preferred uh, in general uh, in this pressure region. So hydrogen can be, easily can go out and it can come in back. So this is our idea. Uh, also, this is the main point of this PNS paper uh, we reported. But this is still we are kind of uh, uh, kind of arguing with the other groups because other groups they don't think this partial release can be possible. And we I, I studied it also 300 gigapascal for fun because 300 gigapascal this tunnel phase diagram doesn't mean any serious one because uh, it's a purely metallic uh, environment. But we can see uh, this uh, two FeO to H and FeO still stable compounds, and this size of scale is reduced further. That means uh, these two stoichiometry getting more and more stabilized 
compared to this partial release hydrogen. So uh, this is a recipe for this uh, FeO and H at high pressure conditions. And also, I'm planning to do, expand my uh, searching for uh, this. Uh, so basically, it's a sum this is a summary for this tunnel phase diagram and some, uh, how much is, I mean, uh, DFT, uh, purely a standard DFT-based searching can be reproduced experimentally. So we have, a, I mean, this red colored one is from our uh, group activity, and also this uh, purple colored one is from other group of our uh, previously known compounds. So uh, I think it, it's quite reliable, right? And yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I, actually, that stoichiometry, I didn't study that much. So 4-7, that is very uh, kind of a not easy guessing. Uh, so actually, I, I said I, I use around 500 uh, compositions. So this 500 composition is not enough to cover all these things. So if i more serious, then I need to do more searching, right? So but uh, I thought... I mean, it's enough because we already reproduced most of the major experimental data. So maybe four seven that is uh, should be added to the, this convexal data if necessary. But if you didn't cover that, and you didn't explore all this composition, how do you know that there's E O A C O two? Ah, yeah, yeah. So that, that that's true. That's true. Actually, I I cannot be sure. I cannot be sure. Right. But so I mean, the 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 good thing about this uh, this phase diagram. So maybe. It, some like a certain or like a big like a stable phases can come out somewhere here 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 right so it's possible yes but this is the best our our knowledge and the second thing is uh, uh, this the uh, if you look at the, the size of the these squares and the, you see um, this part is unlikely we can see any stable compounds so this mostly uh, stable compounds can comes in this region so this is kind of a several steps layered searching and the yeah, if you want really like, uh, get, uh, if you want to be happy with this searching, then we need to do more. But uh, I would say this is beyond our computational research and current uh, computational research. I believe I am one of the richest uh, computational scientists in computational research, but still it's not enough to do the, all these things. If you have phases that are known experimentally, very low energy, you don't need any resources to just put it on there. Yeah, right, yeah, so yeah. So as yeah. for you, comment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Close to, um, yeah, yeah, should be, should be, yeah. So, uh, FE3 or 4 could be on there, no? Put all the numbers up. And by the way, you're missing some compounds in the, on the OH line. OH line? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, cross rate? Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the beyond my scope, I'd say. Uh, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry to bring this uh, not, I mean, Incomplete data, but uh, this is my, my best. Okay, so I, I, I acknowledge this part. So this is not the complete, yes, right. So please, this is like a first uh, like a try to, to make this whole this complex sort of thing. And this is kind of a side work, I would say. Uh, I, I did some aluminum hydroxide thing already, and uh, it's uh, too early to, to, to show this phase diagram because it's not complete. Maybe you have a more complaint about this. But uh, what I found is uh, we found one uh, phase is stabilized ar around this area, and we said an energetically very stable, and uh, we calculate, I mean, this is the insulating phase, and then we calculated the Raman, and we found something very high peak around the 2000 wave number. And I didn't know any other known experimental data for this, but I just come to uh, this paper. Because this paper, the, no, this, this is about the solid hydrogen. And they cover the solid hydrogen with the alumina. So maybe it can be a good source to, to study of this aluminum hydroxide. So when uh, this paper talking about, uh, when they uh, claim this pressure, 
It's because uh, these exp extrapolated Raman data correspond to around the 2,000 wave number. So might be uh, they synthesize this aluminum hydroxide, not just uh, so. The, what's the source of this uh, Raman data? This is my question. So maybe I can just suggest this can be alternative scenario in of this their sample. Is this metallic or something? No, no, this is infinite phase. Yeah, but I mean it can be mixture of this. So they also, I mean, just a kind of one one idea. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not so like. A, uh, rigorously, I can say uh, this is uh, the showing all the possible uh, explanation of this uh, uh, solid hydrogen, but uh, it can be it can react with many other uh, environment here. So one of the the Raman peak uh, can be correspond to this uh, insulating phase of aluminum hydroxide, because this is very unusual for aluminum hydroxide having this such a high intensity around the 2000 wave number. And another one is. Uh, Mm. Uh, very simply, uh, this is very simple calculation for I mean uh, iron and the chlorine, and we found that FeO two stabilized uh, computationally, and uh, Li Zhang she did uh, lots of experiments about this, and uh, FeA I mean so interesting point of FeCl two is also uh, possessing a parallel structure similar to FeO two, so uh, many I mean this. Uh, Similar pilot structure based structure can be some uh, substantial amount can be uh, stored at the development mentor. So that's one of the uh, our guess. And this is end of the, the structure searching. So basically, I try to improve this structure, I mean, structure searching to the like a predicting some uh, beyond our like a binary searching thing. So uh, it comes to tunnel and the low dimensional structure. Uh, this, is, this is the first part, and the second part is about uh, beyond George temperature, like a standard DFT thing. Uh, uh, 2016 uh, Nature paper, I didn't show any electron structure data and the physical properties there because uh, it's, it's purely standard DFT work. And uh, the problem is uh, how much reliable uh, to, to use DFT to this uh, studying transient metal oxide. This is a kind a big question for majority of uh, condensed metal physicists. And uh, if you look at this, so this is representative LDA and GGA prediction for the pure iron at ambient. And you can see the, the minimum, this is uh, non, uh, so LDA predict that uh, the ground state should be uh, non-metallic, uh, non-metallic HCP is a stable phase which is not true. And the GGA predict uh, is the uh, antiferromagnetic uh, PCC structure, I'd say. So uh, basically, they, these two gives two different, complete two different answers. So we know this. So uh, computationally, these two major approximation or exchange correlation functions gives complete two different answers. So uh, we don't know the answer. I mean, we don't, we so which approximation, which correlation we should use? So it's, a, it's, it's still open question. So we don't know that. Uh, so uh, we, we try to go to beyond uh, like a standard DFT description. So the first one is, of course, as adults do, we use uh, putting some how about the U value here. So we compare with uh, this how about the U value with the increasing here and the, this uh, experimentally known, I mean, measured oxygen, oxygen distance and iron oxygen distance here. And we said, so it's around the four point. So U and J, effectively, uh, uh, U and J is a 4.2 electron volt gives the best shot uh, to match with the experiment data. So since then, we start to use this uh, U value and J value here. Uh, this is published uh, last year. And using a, a DMT calculation, uh, basically the message in this, uh, Mm, panel is, uh, this is a bigger volume, right? So this is reduced, so this is a high pressure, so pressure increasing this way. So you can see uh, here, uh, this is non-magnetic equations. So in non-magnetic equations, we can say that, so there is band gap here slightly, and with the increasing pressure, there is a well, band is crossing here, and so it, it turns into metallic. So this is band, band to, uh, insulate metal transition. And this mechanism is uh, should be uh, the sigma pi bond, uh, sigma star bond of oxygen and the T2G level of uh, 
the iron. So if there is a hybridization, then it becomes metallic phase, and if they are separated out at low pressure, then it's a simply. So this is a very simple description we have. And the radar uh, with the Wendy's group, <coughs> they measured uh, spin transition of FeO2 on the pressure. So at low pressure, <coughs> as sorry, uh, gigapascal is a still uh, magnetic uh, phase, and uh, at high pressure, it becomes the magnetic uh, phase. Also, there is corresponding the volume collapsing uh, with the respect pressure. So with the eye guideline for DFT plus U, the magnetic uh, equation of a state, so there is a, certainly there is a volume collapsing is going on here. And uh, uh, we, we could reproduce uh, the experimental situation here. So is that this is a, there is low spin, high spin transition. And uh, this is more uh, type uh, transition can happen here. So more type transition is open uh, circles here, this area. So this is a D region. And C region is a bend insulator area. And this is metallic part. So this is, uh, we, we're crossing this way. So uh, basically, uh, with respect to pressure, uh, it, it goes this way. Uh, no, it's uh, increased pressure to go this way, I'm sorry. So high spin, low spin transition is going on this way. So we, we're trying to explain the, the, what is the mechanism of spin transition. And as you know, uh, I borrowed this image from Alfred Lin's group for FEO. So uh, uh, this high spin, low spin transition uh, in this volume collapsing, as you can see for FEO2 as well, so which can be relevant to the, the bulk modulus uh, softening, uh, in, which has a spin cross version. And we also, I have one poster working on mainly for MD simulation uh, of these uh, uh, compounds. And uh, this is also a very long thing. Uh, this asymmetric, uh, with increasing pressure, this FEOH, uh, turn into pyrolite type FeO2H, so which is uh, mechanism is uh, uh, OH bonding symmetry. Uh, it's uh, asymmetric at low pressure, and at this point it becomes symmetric. And here, so this is uh, a covalent bonding of OH and become ionic here. And then hydrogen can be released as I predicted here. So this is asymmetric transition can lead a weaker bonding of hydrogen to to the, to the system. And of course, if you increase the temperature, then hydrogen can be released. So we suggest uh, it's a superionic state because uh, the remaining structure is remained the same, as you can see. And this, all these uh, different color, these uh, different atomic position, and uh, uh, they are mobile uh, with the increasing uh, temperature. So we, we said uh, this is a superionic. And uh, with the pressure and temperature region, and we said it's a uh, with the increasing temperature, it's a solid, normal solid, and it becomes superionic, and the melting is going on in this. So this is a geosome line. So uh, if FeO2 H uh, exists substantially at the low momentum, still that's the open question. But uh, then, if so, then we can see some superionic nature uh, at there. And uh, maybe this is the one uh, last slide of my research. Uh, previously, I showed uh, FeO2, the phonon, the how many phonon is stable at ambient, but we don't see the sample environment. So uh, maybe it's because it's metastable, so it very uh, easy to react with the air. And uh, with uh, Professor Gonsu Yoon at Postec, uh, he's an expert, he's expert in, in plasma. So we're doing some experiments on this uh, hematite. So here's a uh, pure hematite sample. And uh, if you, I mean, this is very interesting as for me. I mean, uh, so these days I'm expanding in, in some direction to like a warm dense matter, like a plasma condensed matter interaction. And so this iron oxide powder, okay, powder, I'm sorry. Actually, but powder also zinc crystal we did, but uh, in powder case, uh, if you flow the argon with the uh, uh, hydrogen plasma, so then hydrogen take away this all this oxygen out. So then we can very easily see the, the pure iron phase on the sample. So the reduction is very easy with the plasma. It's like a second uh, uh, reaction. But with the uh, oxygen-rich environment for this hematite, then it turned into something different. But uh, we haven't analyzed this yet. So we're trying to, to put like a oxygen, excessive oxygen-rich environment for hematite and see if it can form any like ocean-rich phase, and maybe it can reach to FeO2, we hope so. 
So this is the ongoing uh, project with, uh, with his group. So this is one, uh, it's kind of a summary. So I, uh, I plan to do this BIP recipe uh, uh, project for, to exhaust, I'm sorry, it's not exhaust yet, but uh, we try to exhaust all the possible combination of tunnel resource searching and also very carefully designed the left structure calculation is necessary. Otherwise, the, we cannot give the proper, I mean, the right answer to the community what is the real, the uh, predicted uh, left structure of this material. And also, very close collaboration with experimental groups is uh, critical. Otherwise, yeah, as, as I say, no one will believe what we are doing. Uh, so this is my collaboration. So most of them, you are familiar with the so these three uh, expertise, are, I rely on uh, their, uh, their expertise. So yeah, we are still ongoing. So hope next time I can show more substantial data. So thank you so much for your attention. So yeah, if you release, you then yeah. So I, of course, I heard from my colleagues. So if you lower the temperature, decompress it, then on the 30 gigapascal, the order XRD signals goes away. So maybe it could come on first or different structure. So, yeah. And it seems now. So my question before, and I asked this to Dave too, is you know, whether or not this is a peroxide or not. Uh, it seems now you're claiming it is a peroxide because the sort of narrative that Dave was saying is that it's all related to the highest oxidation. Yeah. Yeah, so iron itself should be reduced at high pressure. So it's a natural, I mean, if you just uh, uh, see the oxidation in terms of oxygen rich, then FPO2 located in a very uh, like a subtle situation. And one group in, in Russia, actually, they contact me. I mean, in their paper, they claim they see iron should be 3 plus. But which is not true. So we use two plus and then non-magnetic uh, phase at high pressure. Yes. Yeah. Also, F, so O2 is the two minus. But the difference. Okay. So this is interesting. So one of the, my idea for this uh, tunnel phase diagram, I want to compare the iron case with uh, M magnesium and aluminium because uh, magnesium all the way is two plus, and aluminium is all the way is three plus. But iron is shifting from the three plus to 2 plus with increasing pressure, but never reach the exactly 2 plus case. So it comes to 2 plus delta. So this delta gives some soft, uh, different answers, so it gives some metallicity. So iron is a different case for this uh, uh, magnesium and, and, and aluminum. And uh, probably next time I can show all this uh, tunnel phase diagram uh, difference between all this uh, oxygen hydrogen and the, the, we change the metal, transient metal from magnesium and iron and uh, aluminum. So then you will see more clearly. Yeah. So uh, in the I, uh, arc dehydrogen system, is hydrogen uh, as an interstitial? Is this, do you look at the interstitial hydrogen? Uh, interstitial hydrogen uh, is, is uh, okay, so in, 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 in high symmetric uh, occupation. So occupation. It's a, uh, okay, so that basically is, is not interstitial. So we didn't consider interstitial case, but uh, probably not. I mean, because uh, we do, I mean, searching from, so from like a zero temperature energy, energy point of view, so hydrogen should be, uh, be happy to be at the, at the, the, the high symmetric position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when, when the hydrogen starts to diffuse, and also you need to overcome the kinetic barrier. So it, it, it's it located in the very well defined the harmonic potential in the high, uh, high, high uh, symmetric position. So, yeah, that, that's my understanding. But this is their temperature creation. So we, we do the MD, but uh, there is a limitation, of course, yeah. Okay, you mentioned that
Yeah, there would be very wrong comments <laughs> uh, if you have enough time. Uh, and these days, I fear, I mean, I, I've done this uh, searching in, in many years. And uh, what I fear these days, uh, yeah, this complex line, and if you, uh, in, in this paper, actually, in this paper, if you see that, that iron rich con concentration, then you can see Fe3O and Fe4O can also in on the convex line, and the, I we never comment on this part. But uh, that energy difference is so small. I mean, okay, here is okay. This is a quite safe zone. But if you come close to the, this end member, then total energy difference could be very small because uh, it can be regarded as a small defect, right? Small substitution. So total energy should be very small. So the difference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe I can predict many different structures uh, nearly stabilized here. So I can, I can claim that this is uh, maybe possible at the Earth's core. And, and, but how much this is reliable to predicting some extreme two end member case, this is still open question for me. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I need more experience. So basically, I cannot comment on this uh, liquid phase. But, yeah. Follow the last few slides. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Why that? Ah, why, why is the case? OK, so I mean, uh, here, so nobody going to believe hydrogen can be released from this alpha phase of a gasite, right? It's because, uh, oh, uh, OK, hydrogen here, here is a hydrogen locate uh, between two oxygen, it's yes, but uh, hydrogen connected to one oxygen closely, so which is covalent bond, so it's, which is very strong. So gas light is very strong here. But if you compress, compress further, then this asymmetric ratio is getting reduced and eventually become asymmetric. So now this hydrogen cannot decide which bonding is should connect it. So it's become ionic there. Then the bonding is weaker. So if you raise the temperature from computational point of view, I mean, I, I also believe so, then uh, this hydrogen can be uh, released, it has a higher chance because now it's a symmetry between these two oxygen, so it can be released very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this paper is in, in archive now, so we can create the, the, the kinetic, possible kinetic barrier. Ah, oxygen return back source. So, ah, OK. So uh, in this model in geoscience, uh, actually, I, I'm a little bit embarrassing to say about geoscience. But OK, so between, uh, so we don't consider about the core thing. I mean, I calculated around the 300 gigapascal because it's a convenient for computational point of view. So I want to check if any new phase can, will comes out. But the real calculation should be limited to around the 100 gigapascal because uh, Outer core and inner core is a different story. Also, the environment is completely different, right? So we just see, I mean, as far as I understand what David and other geoscientists mentioned, this uh, gas light can bring down the substructural line and uh, uh, pass through this current, uh, transition zone or iron meet with water, so forming gas light at high pressure, so forming FeO2H. Uh, so that is the scenario. So that this, 
yeah, this uh, iron rich environment we, we don't consider. Also, when outer core, when meet with water, then we can, it can form like a more, more, more FeO2H. But this is an uh, open question for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll ask one final question and then you can punch in the um, Can we look at your impressive ternary phase diagram? Yeah, yeah. Here, maybe it's several points, but yeah, this one is the uh, most. Within the, uh, mm. for those that don't know, within the crystal structure you're searching um, enterprise, mm. it, or in mathematics in general, it's impossible to actually prove that you found the ground state, the most stable crystal enterprise. We call it hard problem, um, or N NP hard problem. Um, so getting back to this, so for example, if you were to find one other crystal structure that had composition FE, or seven or whatever, you can totally disrupt the convex hole and all the other phases of these proposals. So with you know that knowing that, what mm. is the best practice for doing these types of diagrams? I mean, we could you can always add one more oxygen, you can always add one more iron, you mm. can have mm. an infinite number of stoichiometries. Yeah. Um, well, in your view, I mean, is it is it better to do all the 150, 500 compositions? Should we start with the most common stoichiometries that are known across all the elements? Of course, that changes the pressure. Um, oh. How, I mean, because you could spend a year calculating this diagram, and then you find one more comp compound that makes the imbalance. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you, you can't yeah. solve it mathematically. <coughs> What's the best practice? Like okay, so just suppose we have no idea about what is possible FeO and H at all. Then, I mean, this is uh, actually this one phase diagram not completed from computational research at all. So. Uh, first round, I do searching like a preliminary, and I can see what is the possible metastable form here. So, uh, if you look at this, then as I said, as I said, this part is not likely we can find any good structures, and, but this area is quite big, big spot. So we just focus on uh, this part, spend more time like 80 percent and 20 percent here. So still we don't uh, ignore any possibility to have uh, new structures here, but. Uh, but we just focus on spend time in here, and that when we have experimental data, and we add that information here. So, it's, it's, so there are some like empirical data. I, I admit that. Also, this uh, transient metal oxide is quite tricky, and uh, there is one more uh, example I didn't show here is uh, about uh, like ambient pressure, like a Van der Waals 2D uh, material, which is also ternary compounds. Uh, which we are working on, and we are we are about to submit in the paper. So, but uh, that also includes iron. So, but the experimental known structure is very hard to to predict without knowing the, the real structure. So, because this the, the, the problem is that C over A ratio is uh, unusually very high. It's around six or seven. So when you generate the structure. So normally they don't go to that extreme case. So if the structure is not that well uniformly defined, then uh, we will have a big problem. So for example, if you have a, any like a very strange structure, like a silver ratio, it's like a 10, a very thin and long, then I don't think you can, you can find this uh, general searching. So we should know I mean, that uh, possibility or so, yeah. Yeah, thank you.